Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax, it's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to be back. I want to thank Ken Paramore for stepping in at a short notice and taking care of the show. He did a great job. Oh, Ken is always dependable. He always brings a wealth of information. So I appreciate it, Ken. I appreciate you watching the show every morning and let me know what's good and what's bad. So, all right, so let's move on with today's show. Our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center. We're looking at today is high 54 and low of 34. Not getting out of 50s. We had a, quite a drop last night. Water temperature is 63.3. It's hanging in there pretty steady compared to the drops it had like the week last week, really, and the week before that. Our river, river reading brought to us by Mountain Dew. Take it outside with Mountain Dew. We're looking at the Apalachico Blunt Sound is at a 4.0, but a Choctaw Hatchie at Caraville at a 7.7. .7. And pretty high, and, and staying, it looks like it's going to stay high. In fact, it's going to go up a little bit more with some of the rain we had yesterday and some of the high winds and all. Uh, it's going to keep the uh, keep the water moving uh, out of the sloughs, so it's going to be it's going to be pretty high. The tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Today is December the 18th, and we have a good tide today. A pretty good tide, but going into the weekend, we're back to those neap tides. Hope you had a chance to do it last weekend and have some good fishing in some of the flats, but this weekend, we're pretty slow, and tomorrow's going to be a pretty good tide, too, so you got to get a day tomorrow if you're going to fish the tidal flow. Our uh, wind forecast be coming out of north at about 16. Going to drop later on in the afternoon before dark. It's going to drop down to about 7, but it's going to be blowing, so be aware of that. Let's take a break, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Glad you're with us. Listen, uh, Gail says she couldn't see the Merry Christmas good, so I fold up a piece of paper. I'm going to put a white background behind it. So without, Now, can you see that better, Gail? All right, here we go. We're going to uh, make sure we we want to cover a lot of things. One of the things y'all are so good about on, on the on the show as far as answering questions and staying being an active part of the Panhandle Outdoors team and the, the presentations we make every morning. And you know, we showed this picture last we showed this picture uh, last week, and and uh, Billy Grantham sent it to us, and these tag deer were was the blue. They were taken on public land around the Appalachian management area and nobody knew where they came from. Well, okay, guess what? Here's the answer right here. New message sent to Panhandle Outdoors from Milton O'Dell. The tag bucks you showed on the show this morning probably came from the Spikes family, uh, from the Spikes family property five miles north of the Appalachian Wildlife Management Area. Their fence was down for at least six months after the storm. I saw a couple of those on my property. Y'all keep up the good work. Thank you, Milton O'Dell. I forwarded this to, to Billy Grantham, and that sort of solves the mystery. And it's fascinating what's going to happen. And we talk about we talk about this, and we wish and we mentioned it last time. Uh, all, all these high fence areas had some really good quality deer, bo uh, bucks and does, and and they, you know they got out. They were just looking for food and all. And I wish we could. Uh, could really keep those, uh, they're going to spread out into the general population and be a lot of good DNA there. So I know some of them will survive. So that's going to be a, just a plus plus for, for everyone for that to happen, okay? So now let's get some more pictures. I wanted to, uh, let's see, we're going to show right here. <laughs> I want to shark up the Aaron Carter with fishing up the Apalachicola at John Red Landing at a big old gar. Now, you don't think bull sharks get up the Apalachicola River? That clean, clean cut right there. And that just shows you what, what goes on this day and time. Listen, Tarpon Dock Seafood is having a New Year's giveaway for New Year's. Okay, all, I'm not going to show everything, but all this stuff here, they're giving away. If you buy $100 worth of seafood, they're going to draw. And it went, I mean, look at all the stuff. I got a picture of it right here. Here's all the stuff you can win. Just a random drawing to one of their customers in appreciation. You had a cooler full of stuff. And it's not hard to go to the seafood market these days and spend $100, but you get some quality seafood. And what I'm talking about, sponsor too, let me mention this. I was down at C&G the other day, and Ronnie wanted me to mention this. He took me to the front of the store. He had a stack of, of uh, heaters, some little, little, like you put in a deer blind, and they had water damage on the, uh, on the packages, but we opened them up. They had no water damage to the actual heater itself, those little propane heaters. 
and he's selling those at half price. So he had a whole stack of them. They got wet a little bit on the outside, just just the package itself. The heater is fine for half price. So if you want to get one or get one for present, he'd run on down there. They're going to be. He might have already sold out. I I believe he still got some left, but that's a good deal. So I want to mention that down at C and G. Okay, uh, don't look at that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. We got. I got a. Here's one good from Kyler Beebe. This is coming out of out of Carabelle. Captain Kim sent this. This is Kyler Beebe, and here's a better shot. Is that not a great shot of a of a kid catching a nice redfish? And Carabelle is just one beautiful, peaceful place. Okay. Okay. I got. Let me get through some of this stuff. Uh, okay. This. <laughs> This is coming from Larry Cook from Vernon. Cook, he killed something besides rattlesnakes. That's a 10 point he killed uh, a couple of days ago. That is a very nice buck for this time of the year. A good job there. Okay, and I, you know, really, now that, this time of year, that's a fine one. Joy Wee, Joy, one of my former students, but I'm gonna read this to you. No trophy deer by no means, but being able to spend time with this little hunter and teach her things about deer hunting with hounds that my granddad and dad taught me when I was her age is worth more than any size antlers I would ever put on a wall. And is that not so true? So congratulations, Joy. You understand it. You get the picture. And now you're passing that uh, on down to the next generation. So good job there. Okay, uh, let's see. Drew, Drew Pollard got a fine one. Uh, Jen, I have no words. I can't thank the good Lord enough. And that is a 16 point no fence at Holmes Creek. That's the biggest buck I've seen in a very long time. And uh, here's a better picture of it right here. That, I don't know where, I mean, I don't know the details on it. I know Drew, I know he's a good outdoorsman and he took that one. That is a fine one, 16 points and it's not behind the fence area. I, I gotta get a story on that, Drew. There's a, you know, I believe, uh, the selfie right there. Good job on that. Okay, and <laughs> Junior Hager, you know, let, me, let me get back to these bears, uh, hold on a minute. Uh, what was it, Jeff? Let's see. Let's go ahead and take a break. I'll find where it was. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. We've got a video coming up. I want to show you these two bear pictures. Uh, two different people, two different locations, just within the last couple of days. Junior Hagler. Everybody knows Junior. And this is, Junior said, this is getting ridiculous. And look at there. He's got a herd of them out there. And uh, this, we just got a lot of bears, okay? And another location, this is coming from Jeremy. Look, I thought this was funny, that's a bear sitting in front of another bear, or the mama bear, I guess, and then, I don't know if that's three cubs, or it looks like three cubs to me, but that's a completely different location there. And that was ironically happening the same, the same night. So thank you for sending those. All right, we're gonna set up this video. Well, you know how we always enjoy going fishing and just go when you can and, and speckled trout fishing is so good this time of the year. So I, I wanted to go, we got this video coming up. It's a good video, caught some nice fish. And this, and well, tomorrow, next couple of days, Bill Allen and I headed down to Apalachicola and do some fishing down there. But today, uh, this is fishing in West Bay. So Jeff, let's go ahead and uh, roll this video.
draft trout. I took a picture sitting in the basin. Mason's in school. I took a picture of that trout. Nice trout. Oh, let's measure him. That trout is about 17 inches. 17 inches. We could keep him, but we're gonna let him go. Is that pretty? You take a picture on the center of Mason. things I'm doing if you notice the shoreline we just sort of I got the wind behind me I got it adjusted a little bit with the trolling motor time but what I like when you troll it when you on the shoreline it's different and then what happens you come you know it's sort of just steady roots and everything here but then you come to the grassy spot I always do that as a fishing tip on a grassy spot it will have it extends out there you know the fish are out there feeding and that especially when we ride a high tide the high tide is about to go out so the fish are up there feeding. So anytime you come across a grassy area like that, uh, be ready. And uh, you just never know when you're gonna catch one. Like right now, what I just talked about. Health is this time of the year. I'm gonna measure this one. I measure I measure the last one on the port side of the boat. And that's what I love about having a ruler on both sides, port and starboard. Well they caught him on this side. Okay. Measure him. He's gonna measure he's 16 and a half. The other one's a half an inch bigger than he was. He's a good healthy, he's a good eating fish right here. He's just not going to eat fish. I eat fish, uh, not for that. Let's go. See the ripple? They're falling behind it. Trying to shake it off. Boom. I'm taking a break now. Uh, I always like a little soda water and some crackers. And uh, this, this fishing, the hard work, so I always take a break before it gets hot. 
I want to sort of recap what I've done. We started drifting along this bank, and I showed you where the grass was, and I said, man, a cold drink's good. I said, uh, that, uh, that's where I caught one right after I said that. So we put down a power pole, and we've caught out like four or five right in here in this one spot. So they're hanging out in here, and we haven't moved since then. Uh, also, I, you know, this boat is still new to me. I've had it a year or so, but I still, uh, I love my boat. Uh, I got a power pole on it now. I, I don't think I'll ever fish again without a power pole. It's amazing. And a trolling motor, I mean, this this sucker right here, I mean, it's good. And I've, I've uh, I'm at a point now where the ideal boat, I love, I love everything. I love my fishing partner. <laughs> I, love, I love the, uh, the area we're in. Look around. There's not, we haven't seen another boat all morning, and uh, it's just been special. We're, we're going to fish a little bit longer and, and call it a morning. We're only going to fish about two hours, but I just wanted to tell you that what we did, we found a good shoreline and the grass coming out and caught a fish, and we just put the power pole down. That's all we've done this morning. Folks, I'm literally catching on it every cast. Just about every cast. And that's not about a speck of trout now. No. That's another pretty. I switched the lures. I got tired of catching on one lure. So I'm going to start catching on this. A lot of times I can get it out since that time. I'm about to get him. I'm about to get him again. Uh, all right. All right, what's the matter? Uh, that's 16 even. So between 16 and 17. Uh, okay, I'm going to wrap it up. So we're going to close it down. Called a lot of speckled trout. They're in that one spot. And I can put the power pole down. They had a great morning. And we didn't keep any. But it's fun. I caught them on a Paul. I'm telling you what I caught them on now. A Miradine at first, and then I, just, I got. I was catching so many on Miradine, I just want to switch over to a Paul Brown. And I caught them on a Paul Brown. So that just goes to show you, when they're when they're in a hole and they're biting, they're gonna hit anything you throw at them. And that's how it was this morning for, for about an hour and a half, maybe two at the most. So had a good morning here on Panhandle Outdoors, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that segment there. It's always fun just to get on the water. Just something special about it and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at our fishing game time today brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers. We're looking at 514 to 714 this morning and tonight. 539 to 739. I was looking on the monitor. This is not, this don't cover all of it. So I'm going to add another one. How's that? Is that better, Gail? Now you can see Merry Christmas. Okay, got to get in that spirit. I we'll always thank her for coming down and decorating uh, our set for us. Uh, she keeps it keeps it going. One of the things I, I was I'd mentioned uh, tomorrow's show. We're going to tomorrow. I have a video. I was looking through some old videos the other day. Realized I've got a lot of old videos from when I originally started the show. And one of my favorites is one of the early interviews I did. It was with my cousin Larry Fur. And Larry has still has a state record, the biggest buck typical ever taken in Florida. And you can go online and. and uh, in fact, I've got it right here. This is the F from FWC website. Uh, Larry Fur taken in 1977 in, in West Gaston, and it scored 168 and eighth. And I had, I, I, I remember when it happened. We were, uh, that's my, my cousin Larry, and and Dad had told me about it. He said he got a big one. So I, actually, I went. You know, we saw it a while before he had it had it. Uh, you know, mounted and all that, but. He, in fact, Stan Kirkland was on the team from Tallahassee, the FWC biologist. Stan was with him when he came out to his house and measured it. And now what, what's remarkable about that is, is that it was since 1977, 
uh, that was 42 years ago, that still stood and it's still standing as the biggest buck ever taken. Now, each year I think it's going to be broken, especially with the infiltration of larger bucks coming in from fenced areas and the fences being torn down like during the hurricane and uh, sooner or later, you know, records are made to be broken. But I just want, that's on tomorrow's show. Okay, I've got a couple of other things. I still have not finished the top ten list. I've started it three times. I've got it down here. I've started it three times on a top ten list for, for uh, the outdoorsman. Uh, real quick, I'm going to go over and do what I can. Uh, full box, number one, uh, the game cameras, the spy point camera, number two, number three, the ground blind, and number four, had the, uh, just, I, I stopped there, but number four, a uh, rod and reel set, like you just saw in a video of me fishing, I, I've got, uh, you know, you got two or three sets, you want two or three, a lot of times, you ain't got time, you know, in the old days, it would take time to take the plug off and on, but just put two or three rods and fish with it, you know, just change them out as much as you can. And, uh, that, a uh, rod and reel is always a good Christmas present. And number five, just tackle. You know, get some Paul Browns, get some uh, uh, what, whatever kind of uh, fishing bait that you've used and all. Uh, get some of those, okay? And, and just put them in. A, it's not a main Christmas gift now, just one of them. Uh, number six, a power pole. That's the most expensive one I have on here. That's expensive. A power pole is just about, in my knowledge, and you talk to Fred Myers and all, uh, anybody with red fishes or a power pole is just about revolutionized fishing because it is what it'll do it'll just enable you to do so many things about once you find a spot boom you press down on it goes down i thought that when they first came out i, I didn't think much of them because then I, when i i started going to guys that had them i had to have one and i, I could never see myself not without a power pole now they're fantastic so uh and we're going to, i'm on number six now so we'll stop at that tomorrow I finish it up, but we got we got to wrap it up. Don't, don't forget now on, to be watching tomorrow's show on that state record book. It's one of the early videos I did on Panhandle Outdoors. Wrap it up for today. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Ken Paramore, for taking the show while I was out of town. You have a great day. God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.